tests where we had a walker method, which was defined right here. It's a static method, and it accepts a walkable type. Okay, so any class that implements walkable could be passed to this uh, method as an argument, and this method would call the walk method of that entity, whatever that walkable entity is. So we can either define a, an instance of a walkable, such as a robot or a human, or we can create it on the fly using an anonymous class definition or a lambda expression. Okay, so what's a lambda expression really? They are blocks of code used to implement a method defined by a functional interface. Let me repeat that. Lambdas are blocks of code used to implement a method defined by a functional interface. So the functional interface that this lambda implements is the walkable interface, right? And so why is there an error here? Let's go back to the walkable interface and notice that we have two methods here. This is not a functional interface. Once we get rid of this method, let's comment it out. Now it is a functional interface. And if you go back, notice the code is compiling, okay? So there's a, an annotation called functional interface. And this is a good practice. When you're defining functional interfaces, make sure to use this annotation. Because if someone else comes to this interface and decides to add another method, for example, let me add the run method. Now notice because of this annotation, Eclipse is going to complain, right? Eclipse is smart enough to see that, hey, there's a functional interface annotation. This must be a functional interface. It's giving an error. Hover your mouse here, and it's saying invalid functional interface annotation walkable is not a functional interface because it has two methods. So if we comment this out, or let me just get rid of it altogether, now this is a functional interface. So this is good practice. Make sure to use the functional interface annotation for the interfaces that you defined that have only one method, okay? And so now the code is compiling because we converted the walkable interface into a functional interface. So there are no errors with the lambda expressions that we see here. This, this right here does not have a name. It is an anonymous implementation of an abstract method listed in the functional interface. So let's get some more practice with lambdas. The more methods that you convert to lambdas, the more practice you'll get. So let's start with defining a simple method. The method's called say hello. It doesn't accept any arguments. And all this method is gonna do is just print to the screen, hello there. How would we convert this into a lambda expression? Well, let's work on that. So first things first, we have to have the open and close parentheses, and then we need this arrow expression. And now we can specify in these curly braces the code that we expect. So in this case, it's just one line of code, which is just to print to the screen. So I'm just gonna write that. And since this is just a one-liner, we can put this all on one line, and we, don't, we do not need these curly braces. So let's get rid of those. And there we go. We've converted this method into a lambda expression. Now, if we wanted to put this lambda expression into a variable, now variables need to have types, right? This is a type-safe language. Java is a type-safe language, so we need to tell the compiler what is the type for this variable. And so that's going to need to be a functional interface. And we have two functional interfaces so far in this lecture. One of them is the walkable interface, right? This is functional. And the other one is the lambda interface right here. So both the lambda interface as well as the walkable interface have um, a method that returns void, or it doesn't return anything. So we can use either of those as the data type for hello var. So I'm just going to make this type B the lambda interface like that, and now the code is compiling. Cool. So that's our first method. Let me create another method. Um, and let's just say that this is going to return a, an int, and it's going to sum two numbers. So int arg1 and arg2. It's going to sum both of these arguments and return arg1 plus arg2, like that. How do you convert this into a lambda expression? Why don't you pause the video and try that out on your own? Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you practiced trying to convert this method into a lambda expression. This example was different in that it has arguments, so hopefully you stretch those brain muscles to try to figure out what needs to be done here. Let's go over how to do this. 
first things first, we need those open and close uh, parentheses. And in here, we can't leave this blank anymore because we have arguments. Okay, we have arg1 and arg2. So I'm just going to put a comma b and then put an arrow expression and then do what this method is doing. I'm just going to copy this and paste it here. So we've got an error. It's probably complaining that, hey, what is this expression on its own? We don't know what it is. So we need to uh, define a, an interface type for this. So let's assign this to a variable, and we'll call this sum var. And so this variable needs to have a type. What is that type going to be? We cannot use a lambda interface because that just has one method that returns, you know, it doesn't return anything, it's a void, and it doesn't have arguments either. So we can't use that method, as well as the walkable method, you know, in the walkable interface, this walk method returns nothing as well, right? And it doesn't accept any arguments. So both of these interfaces we cannot use for this example. So what do we do? Well, we can create a new interface. So let's do that. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm actually gonna define that interface out here. At the end of this, at the end of this class definition in the app class file down here, I'm just gonna define another interface. So it's gonna be interface, and we'll call it calculate. And in here we need one method because we want to make this a functional interface. What is that method going to accept? It's going to accept two arguments. So we'll just say, we'll just have the method compute, public compute, and it returns an int. And it accepts two arguments. First one is an int, and the second one is also an integer, right? So it doesn't matter what you name these variables, uh, these parameters, they could be anything, as long as the method signature matches what we are trying to do in the uh, Lambda expression. Okay, so we have this calculate interface, and now I could take this and uh, make some var be a type of calculate. Okay, so we're almost done here, and you'll notice that if you hover your mouse, it's saying we don't need the return. So Lambda expressions are smart enough to know what to return and uh, what the type of uh, the data is going to be when it returns it. And also arg1 and arg2 don't exist here. A and B exist. So let's make this A and make this B. And now it's working fine. So you might be wondering, how do we use this sum var to calculate numbers? Let's, let me show you how to do that. Let's, let's print out sum var dot compute and pass in the numbers, you know, any numbers, doesn't really matter. Four plus six, run as job application, and there we go. It's showing 10. So it's working as expected. Now, how, how do we print this to the screen, this hello var? We do it the same way. I'm just going to print this up here right above, and we'll, de we'll do hello var dot sum method, because that is a method that belongs to that interface. Now, since we are printing already, we don't need this print line statement, do we? So let's get rid of that, because this hello var is printing. It's doing what this is saying, right? So uh, we invoke the interface method, and it's going to invoke this right here, all right? So now we should see hello there being printed before 10. So right click, run as job application, and there we go. It's printing hello there. And uh, the number 10 is also being printed. Let me just change this to print line so that it, it, it prints the next line. So let's continue practicing. Let's define another method, which is also going to return int. And this is going to be called non-zero divide. All right, we want to divide two numbers. The first one is going to be divided by the second. And in here, we're just going to return arg1 divided by arg2. But we don't want to just do that. I want to add another step in here. If uh, arg1 is 0, then we want to return 0. Okay, so that we prevent uh, division by 0 number. So how would you convert this into a lambda expression? Pause the video, try this out, and you can resume to watch my solution. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you were able to turn this method into a lambda expression. So let's get started. Let's first define the arguments that go in here. So I'm just going to say a comma b, and then we use the arrow expression, and then we have the code 
that's part of the body of non-zero divide. So what is that code? I'm going to put that in brackets because we're going to need multiple lines uh, for this example. So we could just copy most of this right here. Arg1 no longer exists, so it's, it's actually A. So let's change that to A is equal to 0. We're doing that comparison. And in that case, it's going to return 0. Otherwise, it's going to return A divided by B. All right, using the parameters that are part of this lambda expression. And then we need a semicolon at the end to end this lambda expression. So let's define a variable for this code, this block of code. And I'll call that non-zero divider. Okay, so what is going to be the type for this variable? Well, we have a functional interface that has a method that accepts two arguments. Both arguments are int, and it returns an int. Where is that interface? That's defined on the bottom of this class down here, calculate. So let's reuse that, okay? Uh, the calculate interface. So I'm going to uh, make non-zero divide, divider be of type calculate. And there we go. This lambda expression is also complete. So if you want to uh, print the result of dividing two numbers, it's going to be very similar to this right here. I'm going to copy this and paste it here. And sum var, uh, in, the, in this case, not sum var, in this case, it's non-zero divider. So let's put that there, non-zero divider, compute, um, and let's just do 10 divided by 5. And there we go. We see 2. So the code is working properly. So let's continue on. Um, we're going to work on trying to convert two more methods into lambda expressions. And the next method is going to return an, uh, a string. It's going to return string, and it's going to uh, do reverse. It's going to reverse the argument that we pass to it, so str. In the interest of time, I'm going to fast forward. The code is pretty straightforward for this reverse method. You can review it. So take a minute, pause the video, and try to convert this into a lambda expression. OK, welcome back. Hopefully, you're able to convert this into a lambda expression. Let's go over uh, into the main method and try to do that. So we need the open and close parentheses, and then we need the arrow, and then we have the, the code that's going to be in here, okay? Now the code is going to be on multiple lines because we have a for loop, we have the return clause, and we're doing some things. So it's going to be a multi-line lambda expression. And the argument that it accepts is a string. So I'm just going to say s for now. So I just copy-pasted those same instructions into this lambda expression. The only difference is that the parameter here is s, not str. So once that's all said and done, we return, outside of that for loop, we return the result. So this is almost done. We need to give this thing a, a type. So let's first give it a variable, and we'll just say reverser. So far, we've got the walkable interface, we've got the lambda interface, and then we have one more down here called calculate. None of those interfaces accept a string as an argument and return a string. So we need to create another interface that this is an implementation of. So let's create that interface. Right below the calculate, I'll define another interface. And this is going to be string worker. And this is just going to be responsible for dealing with strings. So this is going to return public string. And we'll just say work. And it needs to accept an argument. And that is of type string. And we'll say str. So now we could take the string worker and make it, make it the type for this reverser variable, like that. And now this is working as expected. Uh, by the way, this str doesn't exist in this context. The argument is actually s. So we need to make sure we put s here. And now this is working as expected. So let's invoke this uh, lambda expression. I'm just going to print line reverser dot work and give a particular string. And we're just going to type in vehicle to see if it's able to reverse these characters. So let's right click, run as Java application. And whoops, we've got a we've got a problem. It says string index out of range. Oh, I made an error. This s dot length minus one. Right, this minus one needs to be there because this works just like an array. And so the last index position of the string 
is going to be one less than the length, all right? I don't think I made that error down here in this method. In the reverse string, yeah, I'm doing a minus one here. I forgot to do that uh, up here. So this is working. Let's right click, run as, it should work now. And there we go. It's able to reverse the characters of vehicle into this. So we've got plenty of practice. Let me give you just one more, and then we'll, we'll move on to other Lambda stuff. Uh, the next method is a factorial method. All right, you might be familiar with how to code that, but basically it goes something like this. Factorial, it accepts an argument that is a number, right? So it returns an int, it accepts an int as an argument, and it, uh, if you're not aware, factorial is a multiplication of all the numbers up to a given number. So for example, if you're trying to find a factorial of 5, it would be 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. And that would give you, I think, uh, 120. Uh, so that's what a factorial is. To save time, I fast forwarded and typed this method out for you. This is our factorial method. And now you can try to convert this into a Lambda expression. Okay, welcome back. We're just going to basically copy all that code into a Lambda expression. Let's define the open and close parentheses. And then we'll have a multi-line uh, set of commands here. So we need two uh, curly braces. And in here, we'll paste in what we're doing. And so this accepts a number as the argument. So I'm just going to put n here. And so n is going to be, instead of num, it's, it's actually n. All right. And everything else pretty much stays the same. Um, let's just call that variable computed number. And we need to give this variable a type. So do we have a functional interface that has a method that accepts an integer as an argument and returns an integer. We haven't created one yet. So let's create that interface. I'm going to go down here, um, and that's going to be very similar to this one. So I'm going to copy this. This, this, would, this would work almost. But we, since we have two arguments, we cannot use this uh, for that example. We need to actually have an interface that has one argument. So let me get rid of the second argument here. And we'll call this number worker, for example. Okay. This accepts an integer and returns an integer. And now I can take this and assign it to the computed number variable. Uh, not assign it, but give it the type. I'm going to print to the screen computed number dot compute and pass in, for example, the number 10. And this will give us the factorial of 10. So let's right click, run as Java application, and uh, there we go. Now, you might be wondering what's the real benefit of the, using these lambdas. It's not just about uh, using less code to do the same thing. That's not what lambdas is about. Lambdas allow us to disassociate a set of instructions from an object, okay? Because traditionally, in object-oriented programming, everything is an object, right? And uh, if you want to run some kind of functionality, that functionality needs to be part of an object, part of the class. And this breaks that association where we can create these non-associated methods, uh, or functions rather, is the term that I'd like to use. And this computed number could be used in all over this code. So lambdas allow this separation of behavior from an object, okay? You can have blocks of code that no longer need to be uh, associated with a given object. These blocks of code could be passed around as arguments to other methods, and can be used as, as you know, just general blocks of code anywhere in your application. As a side effect of lambdas, um, and this is actually a beneficial side effect for the Java language, is that it does allow for more succinct code, right? Less lines of code. But you might be wondering, is that really the case? I mean, for every lambda expression, we're having to write extra code. We're having to create an interface for every lambda expression. Well, I have good news for you, and that is that Java version 8 also came with a bunch of functional interfaces that we can use in our programs, okay? I just had to show you how to manually create these functional interfaces to support our Lambda expressions, but believe it or not, there's plenty of built-in Java 8 functional interfaces that we can use in our applications, and we're going to get into those in the next lecture. For the functional interfaces that I've created, there is room for some more improvement, okay? We can refactor this and make it a little bit more succinct. For example, the computed number accepts one argument, and it returns the data type of that uh, argument type, right? So if this is accepting an integer, it returns an integer, 
And over here, the reverser accepts one argument and it returns uh, the same argument data type. So if it accepts a string, it's returning a string. So could we make this interface uh, more generic? Let's go down to the string worker interface. Both of these methods are very similar, right? They're only accepting one argument. So could we make this more generic? Absolutely. I'm going to change this to my generic interface. Okay, let's rename this to my generic interface. And we'll just say work uh, is the method name. And I'm going to make it generic where it accepts a type. And that type could be the return type like that. And the argument of that type could be of type T. And now this data type, this interface type could be used for both the lambda expressions, the one involving the string as well as the one involving the integer. So going back to the lambda expression for reverser, this is no longer going to compile because we don't have that interface anymore. So let's make that my generic interface. And we give it the type. We have to specify the type. For this lambda expression, it's going to be of type string so that it knows that s, this variable s, is of type string and it's going to return that uh, string data type. And we can use the same thing, this my generic interface, for this number worker as well. So let me change that here. And instead of um, this being a string, in this case, it's going to be integer. And we have to use the wrapper class integer uh, for this data type. And now both of these are still going to work. These are perfectly valid lambda expressions. And it's really using only one class, which is, uh, excuse me, one interface, which is the my generic interface. So we were able to lessen the amount of code, which is good, but it's not perfect. The method now for this is no longer compute, it's, it's work. Now, lambdas are the main feature for Java version 8, okay? And I spent a lot of time explaining to you how to convert a method into a lambda expression, all right? So we talked about it in great detail syntactically, how to convert methods into lambda expressions. But what was, what are they really? Well, lambdas are basically a way to disassociate uh, a set of functionality from an object, okay? So we are switching from an object-oriented way of, of programming to a functional way of programming. That's what Java 8, one of the biggest features in Java 8 was, is to introduce functional programming. So why is this, what, what, what's the reason behind the switch? Java has always been an object-oriented programming language. Why did they have to introduce this functional programming paradigm into the language? The real reason uh, is to compete with other programming languages in uh, data processing, okay? Other languages are, were actually better at performing bulk operations on series of data, all right? And so with uh, Java, working with collections, it does make it very easy, but you have to do it in an object-oriented way, and that could, uh, you know, that there's a lot of code involved in that, but actually using lambdas to do bulk operations on collections is uh, far more succinct. And I haven't shown you how to do that in this lecture. I had to cover the logistics behind how, uh, you know, these lambda expressions are put together and how they're related to the inter interface. But the real intent behind why lambda expressions were introduced, why lambdas or functional, functional programming was introduced in Java, was to work with collections of data uh, in a far more succinct and expressive way to compete with other programming languages uh, and so I think they achieved that, and I'll show you in the next lecture how we can uh, better utilize collections with lambdas and make that process far more succinct and more expressive. The code is actually more readable uh, and more expressive when using collections with lambdas. So let me wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. We'll continue in the next lecture.